Hello, Tom here at the Round Budo Academy. Uh, what I want to talk about today is the basics of just drawing a Japanese katana. Um, I want to give you the proper body mechanics and how important it is to use both the right hand and the left hand. Uh, but first, I want to talk about the orientation of the sword inside the obi. <clears throat> You're going to notice that my sword, the blade is up, and the curve is the curve, or the sori, is sort of pointing upward as as the sword slopes down to the ground. Um, the older arts, and some arts still to this day, this, this curvature of the sword is going towards the ground. Um, in the early 1600s, um, a person by the name of Hasegawa Aishin, he came up with the idea of shortening the sword, uh, so it's the length of what you see now, which is the katana, and uh, also having a blade up. Um, he also introduced a different seating position, but, but today we'll just get into a standing draw. When you're drawing the sword, what's important to understand is you have to use both the left hand and the right hand. And once you get more competent at it, then you learn to use your whole body, including your center and your legs. But for today, we'll just go over the, uh, the hand work, so to speak. Um, another thing that's important to understand is when you're, when you're wearing your sword, you don't want to have it all the way over here to your, to your left, because then you have to reach across. And now your wrist is wide open uh, for a as a target, the kote. The sword is worn on a 45 degree angle. The subo or the hilt is right at your center. This way, when your hands reach up to grab the sword, you can still protect yourself. Here in this position, there's no protection of your center. It's your whole center is wide open here. So try and keep that in mind. It's a common beginner mistake. You know, when, when folks come to the dojo, the swords are here and they, they reach right across and, and give me that target. It's nice to see. Um, but this is a proper way to hold a, uh, to wear a katana in your obi. So when you draw the sword, what's important? A few, there's lots of important factors, but uh, another one is is after you release the subo with your thumb, you want to make sure you push the sword straight out in front of your face. You don't pull it out with your right hand, because then what's going to happen is you're going to have this kind of orientation with your right arm. You want to keep that triangular shape at your center as you push your sword out. Don't pull it, push it right out. And your hand isn't really grabbing the handle yet. It's just in the same position if you were to say stop at someone. So you just push the sword out just like that, face level. At this point, when you're ready to cut, you're only going to have a little bit of blade left in your saya. And if you want to have even less blade in the saya, you want to pull the saya back or push it back, really. We call this saya biki. And then you twist the side with the left hand, not the right hand. And now you're building up pressure right in this area. And then you let it fly by pulling the side back. A misconception of drawing a Japanese style sword is a whole draw is done with the right arm. You just pull it out and you can hear that loud scrape. That means I had too much blade left on my side here. So when my arm is straight out and I haven't touched my side there's a lot of blade left in here, you can see. So what I want to do is I want to reduce that so I have a safer and a quicker draw. And how do I do that is by pulling back this side or pushing it back at the same time, and I'll do this really slow, at the same time pushing the right hand out. So now I'm ready to go. I've only got a very small amount of blade left in my side. much smoother, much easier to do. Regardless of the direction or the height of what you, what you want to do for your cut, it's all controlled by the left hand. So if I turn the side even more, I can do an upward kiriage cut or a gyaku kesa cut. If I want to do more of a 45 degree cut, I just don't turn the side as much. So the lesson here is make sure you pay attention to your left hand. Rather than just using your right hand and not really doing much here, now you have to reach out even more. Now you're off balance, and you're not going to have a good cut. It's going to be all wrist and forearm. Now from the front view, I want to show you what you do with your hands when you begin the draw. So earlier I talked about how this is incorrect. The correct way is the sword's on 45 degrees. Both hands come to the sword. The left, This hand is going to get there a little bit sooner. It's going to bring the sword down to the right hand. And then you're going to do a nice motion straight up to your opponent's face. 
Then you're going to turn the saw with your left hand. Now from this view, you can see that I'm going to rotate my hip to my left slightly and then release and have that saw come straight out. You see my left arm, my left hand is protected here by hiding back here from, from an attack. Turn, cut. Now you notice I'm bringing my right foot out at the same time. This is a good way when you're practicing your draws to incorporate your whole body. So your center goes forward with this draw. It's really important to do that. Once we've figured out the arm orientations and the arm movements, now you can incorporate your whole body. So again, the left hand brings the sword down to the right hand. Now the right foot, I'm going to put more weight on my left foot, obviously, for me to do this. So my right foot's going to go out with my right hand. And now I'm going to have a lot of tension in my legs, my center. And I'm going to go forward. I'm going to push my whole body forward with this movement for a draw. It has a lot more power, and it's a much truer cut, too, as well. So practice this. Send me a couple of videos if you like. If you want some feedback, check out our distance learning program. Check out our dojo here in Massachusetts. Hit subscribe, hit like, and I appreciate you watching. Thank you.